Hello everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of Decoding the Unknown, as always. Hello there, I'm your host Simon. What happens here? Katie writes me a script. This one's called Where the Pollock Sisters Reincarnated. Uh, I've never read this script before. It's what we call a cold read, a sight read, whatever you want to call it. I go into it blind. What I do know is the answer to today's question. No, they weren't reincarnated. Because reincarnation is not real. I have no idea who the Pollock sisters are. I mean, hopefully they're not related to Jackson Pollock, because if there's anyone who art, we don't need reincarnated. It is Jackson Pollock's nonsense, which somehow sells for $100 million. Which blows my mind. Uh, anyway, this is the Pollock sisters. Were they reincarnated? Thank you, Katie, for writing it. Thank you, Jen, for doing the beautiful work on the, uh, the audio and the visual afterwards. The editing stuff. Let's get into it, shall we? I don't really know what to think about the concept of past lives, karma, and reincarnation. There are several religions that do believe in reincarnation, that it is the transference of a soul into a new body after death, but while that concept is broadly agreed upon, the various rules got so granular that my eyes started to go funny. <laughs> yeah, my brain starts to go funny with the idea of re- You know, I know like reincarnation's not real for me, because I didn't have any past lives. I don't remember anything. It was like before I was born was a big blank void of nothingness. And either by some miracle I'm the first in a chain of reincarnated people. Doesn't seem very likely, does it? Also, how many people do you know who are like, yeah, 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 no, my past life I was uh, John. He was a builder. Uh, and that's it. It's always like, if someone believes in reincarnation, it's not like my past life I was a... I was a blessed cat. Or I was like, something interesting. It's never something boring, is it? And the vast majority is like, everyone is, you know... The vast majority of reincarnations are going to be boring boring people's lives, just regular lives. Not anything interesting, is it? The basics seem to be that yes, what you do in your previous and current life does count towards what your body and soul will inhabit next time. This is the concept of karma practiced by many followers of Buddhism or Hinduism. It's also used by non-followers of Buddhism or Hinduism to mean almost the same thing but in a more immediate way, making karma almost synonymous with payback or getting what you deserve, either positively or negatively. Yeah. I mean, I do kind of believe in karma. I wouldn't call it karma. I'd call it like like reaping what you sow. If you're a complete dickhead and you go around being a dick towards everyone, people are going to be a dick back to you. Oh, I get it. That's just how it is. It's not. I don't think there's any mis anything mystical about it particularly. Some really, and I also believe like if you go around doing good things, the chances are someone's going to do something good for you. Probably not like equally, but uh, yeah. I kind of, I think that's right. I mean, just go around being good. Seems like a nice, nice way to live. Some religions believe that if a soul manages to go round enough times, it will eventually attain a state whereupon it can exit the cycle altogether. It can then go hang out with all the other super enlightened souls elsewhere in the universe while the poor schmucks on planet Earth go through the same process over and over again, sometimes advancing, sometimes regressing to animal or even a vegetable state. And I guess it's hard work. Uh, it's hard to work up any sort of karmic progress if you're reincarnated as a carrot. The good news, though, carrots don't last very long. They'll be harvested and eaten. The bad news is if you get reincarnated as, like, some old tree, and it's like, yeah, 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 guess what? You're going to be 2,000 years as a tree. This tree's going to live for 2,000 years. You can't even move. You're a tree. you would be like, oh, f***. Again? What do you think you're doing? The concept of having lived many lives before has come up throughout history. You're not supposed to be able to remember your past lives. Oh, well, that's convenient, isn't it? Although I would have thought this would come in handy for advancing through society, but maybe it's seen as cheating and you have to enter each new cycle without any hidden advantage or knowledge. So what's the point of the previous bloody cycles then? These past lives generally pop up through hypnosis and people have said that there used to be all kinds of important and famous people in the past. Yeah, this is exactly what I was saying. It's never like I was John the Plumber. It never is. Ancient Egyptian pharaohs often claim that they are the reincarnation of various gods. And in modern times, people have claimed to be the reincarnations of these pharaohs. Not many people claim to have had past lives as a bus driver called Th Keith. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. For example, but maybe we just haven't heard about the mundane ones. Yeah, can you imagine if someone who's just absolutely, it's like, yeah, no, no, no. In my past life, I was a bus driver called Keith. And just not tell anyone because he's like, it's really boring. Keith was, he's just kind of a boring man. He just had his, he just drove the number 12 bus. That's what he did. He didn't even have a family. He didn't do much. Drove around on the bus. He didn't have any hobbies. He didn't even like, he didn't like going on a holiday, just loved driving the bus. He did it every day. That's Keith. <laughs> My past life. 
The main question I have about reincarnation is when does a soul's journey start? Were they were these souls present right from the get-go in animals or plants? As one a new ones being created all the time. There must be, as the population keeps growing. Or were there just like a thousand at the start of when things became conscious and then they kept going round and round and these people exist slightly above everyone else who just got the one shot at it and that's it. I remember hearing a long time ago that most people are li- more people are alive today than have ever existed, meaning that reincarnation cannot be a thing, or at least new souls must be needed to create uh, to be created all the time to keep up with demands. I don't know where you heard that there are more people alive today than have been ever alive in all of time it's definitely not true unless i'm really it can't be true there's like seven billion people alive today i think isn't it more like a hundred billion or a trillion no it can't be a trillion that's way too many i don't know it's a lot how let's just google this real quick people alive in history how many people have there ever been better better way of phrasing that 107 billion people so someone lied to you katie uh no um well uh, so it still doesn't work does it obviously it doesn't work it's reincarnation it's stupid uh this is not true however as the population reference bureau states on its website pbr prb.org given a current global population of about 7.8 billion the revised estimate means those alive in 2020 represent nearly seven percent of the total number who ever existed uh who have ever lived okay so uh yeah katie probably she went the exact same this is why sometimes i think i should read these ed because katie went on exactly the same journey as me being like that doesn't sound real googling it and being like oh i see and i see the top google results is prb.org so exactly the same adventure so put that in your pipe and smoke it reincarnation deniers those souls are all lining up waiting for another spin around the sun as i am not religious and am kind of fumbling my way through this bit let's breathe a sigh of relief and move on to today's actual story reincarnation is primarily a facet of asian religions that started in india such as hinduism buddhism sikhism and J jainism don't know that one why then is one of the most compelling cases for the transference of a soul from one body to the next based around a couple of girls from northumberland in england (laughs) well let's find out let's decode the unknown shall we i'm just gonna beg to disagree already i'm just gonna i'm sure because i mean i on decoding the unknown we sometimes cover ones that i think are reasonable and realistic and possibly happens this one i'm already like oh please (laughs) The mystery. Just a quick note before we start that this story does deal with the deaths of young children. No, it doesn't. They're reincarnated, Katie. They never die. No, it does, though. And a few potentially distressing details, so please bear that in mind if you want to carry on. Good, you ready? Let's go. In Hexham, England, in May 1957, the lives of the Pollock family were changed forever when 11-year-old Joanna and a younger sister, 6-year-old Jacqueline, were hit by a car on their way to church and were killed instantly. The driver of the car was a woman in a drugged and mentally distressed state who, ever, who, having just had her own children taken away from her, intentionally drove into the Pollock sisters and their friends when she saw them walking along the road. You f***ing monster. What? I mean, I get that you're in, having some sort of episode, but get it together their friends also later died in hospital even in the depths of his grief their father john pollock was convinced by a long-held interest in reincarnation that his daughters would return and be reborn into their family as twins there was no history of twins on either side of the family that doesn't that doesn't make a difference right that's not a genetic thing and his wife florence did not share the same belief in reincarnation as her husband the very next year however florence pollock became pregnant and while only one heartbeat had been detected throughout the pregnancy john's beliefs were confirmed when she gave birth to twin girls in october 1958. um i get the feeling there's going to be a ton of john pollock having mental like not issues it's just grief i mean just grief but it's obviously depths of grief and this is how he's dealing with it um which is not really dealing with it because the reality is his kids are dead which is horrible but um yeah no this this is this is already depressing isn't it this song is called i am so sad i am so very very sad 
The signs that these twins were the reincarnation of their deceased sisters, sisters became apparent almost straight away. Slightly annoyingly, they all have quite similar names, but I'll try and keep it clear who's who by referring to them either as a twin in the case of the twins or as a sister if we're talking about the two deceased girls. Okay, so twins for twins, sisters for sisters. New twin Jennifer was born without with a birthmark on her waist and a white line on her forehead. This made her seemingly the vessel for the deceased Jacqueline as she had the same distinct birthmark on her waist and had cut her head falling on a bucket when she was three, resulting in a thin scar on her forehead. This meant that Joanna, who was 11 when she died, was now reborn as the new twin Jillian, and as the twins grew, Jillian took on a more motherly role to her twin, just as Joanna had to Jacqueline. And speaking of motherly, when the sisters were alive, both Florence and John were working together at their grocery delivery business, leaving the main childcare to the girl's grandmother. After the shock of losing her daughters and then having the twins, Florence Pollock stopped working on to, to concentrate on looking after the girls, but the twins still preferred the company of their grandmother, despite their mother now being available to them. That is nothing special. <laughs> I'm not ready on this come on simon give it a chance i can't it's reincarnation it's daft nothing much else happens for a couple of years as the twins were just babies learning how to do stuff but when they started talking and generally becoming more aware as human beings their parents were taken aback at the things they would come out with both girls had a palpable fear of cu- fear of cars and would be visibly scared if one was driving close to them once they heard a car in an alleyway and shouted the car the car it's coming for us Their mother, Florence, found them on more than one occasion, apparently reliving the crash experience with Jillian touching Jennifer's head and saying things like, the blood's coming out of your eyes and that's where the car hit you. Their father confirmed that younger sister Jacqueline had been bandaged just above the eyes when he went to identify her body. As well as seemingly having knowledge of the event that ended their lives, the twins also seemed to have knowledge of the everyday lives of their sisters. They started asking for toys that Florence had boxed away and hadn't told them about, and when the twins got them, they shared them between themselves, with Jennifer claiming the deceased younger sister's toys and Jillian naturally taking possession of older sister Joanna's doll. Um, Again, this just feels like having young kids myself, it's like amazing what they understand and you don't even think about it. Like, the stuff my kid comes out with, and it's like, how do you know that? And it's like, I just must have mentioned it to my wife, not telling her, not teaching her, or just mentioned it to myself, you know, blah, 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 talking. And like, she knows it. I said, yeah, because they're smart and they watch. And even though they can't like talk about it until later, they still learn it. And I'm immediately thinking with this, well, okay, so the parents have talked about it and the kids there, they think they don't understand, but the kids do understand. And then this it just self-perpetuates. They knew all the names of the toys and which toys had been Christmas gifts and which hadn't. Jillian enjoyed acting and dressing up, which mirrored her older sister's favorite activity, and they both loved brushing their father's hair, a very specific thing which their older sisters also had great fun doing. When the twins were around four years old, the family returned to Hexham for the first time since the twins had been babies, and astonishingly, both girls seemed familiar with the place, knowing the way to a park with swings that their sisters had liked and even pointing out the school that their sisters had attended. Again, this can just be explained by the fact that the parents have talked about this and their kids are smarter than they think. They would refer to some things as though they had experience with them when they hadn't. For example, Florence once told the twins that they could eat lunch at school if they didn't like what she made for them. They replied, we've done that before even though they hadn't. The older sisters, however, had. And once you've told the sisters, and once they're aware that, which is creepy and not a nice thing to do, that you believe they are the reincarnation of their dead older siblings, um, they're going to latch onto that because they're kids and they see your grief and how it affects you and how that makes you feel better. And then they're just going to play into that because it makes you feel better, which is sad and not really fair on the younger kids, is it? As they started to develop more skills, it was noticeable to their parents that Jillian could naturally hold a pencil and took to writing more quickly than her twin Jennifer, who would hold the pencil more in a fist grip and is noted to have had issues with writing and holding a pen into adulthood. This is not particularly significant until you hear that older sister Joanna enjoyed writing and had taken to it naturally, while her younger sister Jacqueline had struggled with holding a pencil in her short life and would usually revert to holding it in her fist. Uh, Again, uh, combination of environment and then being aware of it and also genetic factors they are very closely related to their their older siblings once john pollock put on an old smock that florence used before the twins were born jennifer who had never seen it before asked why are you wearing mummy's coat 
Jillian did not have any reaction to the smock, and Jennifer got annoyed with her and said that their mother used to wear it when she was delivering milk, which was true. If Jillian was the reincarnation of older deceased Pollock's sister, she would not have been familiar with the coat, as the older sister Joanna was always at school when her mother was out doing deliveries, while the younger sister was at home and would have seen her in the coat. Throughout these occurrences, their father John became more and more convinced that his dead daughters had returned to him, but while Florence wavered back and forth, she never believed as strongly as he did. The older sister Joanna had also been fond of saying, I will never be a lady, which takes on a chilling meaning in the aftermath of her early death. Yeah, but this is, I don't know, it's a really messed up situation. And it's just like a, a family dealing with grief in a super weird way. As the tale of the potentially reincarnated twins seeped out, a psychologist called Dr. Ian Stevenson got wind of them and conducted many interviews with them, their parents, and other children for his book, Children Who Remember Previous Lives. Uh, where did you go to medical school? <laughs> Which was first published in 1987. As they aged, however, the twins remembered less and less about their previous lives, and by the age of around five, they had stopped mentioning it altogether, and the coincidences also stopped. Was this because, as the younger sister had only been six when she died, their previous life experience had come to an end, or is it just a natural thing that happens in reincarnation so that people can get on with the new life that they have? Why was Dr. Ian Stevenson so convinced they were telling the truth? Well, it's time to decode. Explanations I don't like bashing stuff like this as it feels quite low. <laughs> ah. Well, I feel I don't want to be. I, I mean, I'm bashing the the ridiculous belief. I'm bashing the fact that this is this this happens. What I'm not bashing is the fact that people deal with grief in all sorts of strange ways, and we have to respect that. And I hope I'm not seen as bashing it, but being like these people needed more help than they got. I don't know what that's a failing of, but it's a failing of something. However, I'm quite surprised that this case is supposed to be some of the strongest evidence we have to prove reincarnation exists, as in my opinion, it's still pretty weak. John Pollock was an admitted believer in reincarnation, which was a little odd as he was a Catholic, and Florence had converted to Catholicism when they got married. Catholicism and reincarnation don't really mix, so why was John so obsessed with the idea that his daughters would be brought back? Apparently, John was under the impression that his first daughters died as punishment for him believing in reincarnation, so there you go, a bit of Catholic guilt for you after all. Well, that's very strange. <laughs> it's kind of roundabout. But it turns out that he was right all along. Think about it. They had to die in order to prove that reincarnation really happened happens and to ensure John was a witness to it, it had to happen while he and his wife were still a parenting age. I don't know if I've made a point to prove or disprove it there, but let's carry on. I believe if someone is believes in something, they're predisposed to seeing it happen. Like if you believe let's use reincarnation. If you believe in reincarnation, you're more likely to see reincarnation in something where there is no reincarnation because it's not real. Right? It's like uh confirmation bias, is that the right thing where you like you see what you want to see? The main negative to this story is that, as is so often the case, we only have the word of a couple of people that any of the examples happened at all. The same, yeah, and also if you're telling that story later as someone who believes in it, you're more likely to not even consciously exaggerate, but because you've seen it, all these things, you're like, yeah, and then this was absolutely like this, even though it's like, yeah, an objective observer might be like, mm, yeah, no. The same couple of stories about the toys in the school keeps getting trotted out, but there doesn't really seem to be much more to it than that. Neither twin came flat out and said she was Joanna or Jacqueline, which you might expect if they had been immediately plonked back into their new bodies. The parents claimed they had not talked to the twins about their death, about the deaths of their sister, so how could they know the details? Well, that's interesting. Well, they may have heard their parents talking or heard about it some other way. Exactly. Their grandmother. Okay, so the grandmother told them. The grandmother spent a lot of time looking after the first sisters, so she may have talked to the twins about what happened. And it's not normally mentioned as an important point, but the Pollock twins also had four older brothers at this point, so it gets easier and easier to see when the information about their sisters, where the information might have been coming from. Yeah, the brothers told them. I mean, I can understand the parents maybe not mentioning the deaths around them, but there is absolutely no way that one of the many other siblings wouldn't have let it slip at one point or another, probably on purpose. Yes, for sure, because kids are stupid. And mean. The holding the pencil thing is also not conclusive proof of reincarnation. <laughs> yes, no <laughs> Uh, I guess one twin found it easier than the other to get to grips with writing. My own children hold pens in different ways, and I use my and myself use a modified version of the quote unquote proper way to hold a pen, as it's always just been easier and felt more natural. I don't even know. I do. I didn't even know how do I hold a pen. 
like this. I guess like resting on the third finger with the, the index finger on top, right? And then the thumb around the side? Is that normal? I don't even know. I didn't even know there was really a proper way to hold a pen. The fact that Sister Jacqueline had been using her fist holder pencil at the age of six isn't that unusual and only takes on any importance because one of her twin sisters did the same thing. I have no idea if the way you hold a pen can be related to genetics, but in examples similar to this, don't you think it's more a case of genetic disposition over reincarnation? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Joanna repeatedly saying, I will never be a lady, only takes on significance because of her premature death. She might have said it in response to her mother or grandmother saying something about her behavior. It's easy to imagine a child being called, told, young ladies don't do X, Y, Z, and then retorting, well then, I will never be a lady. It would have been far more prescient for her to say something like, I will die young, or I'm going to get hit by a car, but she never said anything like that. Also, let's talk about Florence's smock and that John wore one day. Twin Jennifer said, why are you wearing mummy's coat. She might have just been asking why her dad was wearing an item intended for a woman or that it looked like a dress or something. She might have gotten the information that her mum had worn it when she was still working for any one of several brothers or her grandmother. And Gillian might not have been told that or hadn't been paying attention, so it rang no bells when the item reappeared. Yeah, it's like, if I... <laughs> If you're a kid and you see your dad wearing a woman's jacket, you'll be like, why are you wearing mummy's jacket? Because there aren't really any other women around, like having coats in the house. Right? It's obvious. Also, when the older sisters were still alive, Florence and John worked together on their grocery and dairy business, so the children were looked after primarily with their gra from their grandmother. When the twins were born, Florence stopped working to concentrate on them, but they still seemed to prefer spending time with the grandmother. This could just be that Florence was unconsciously acting in a slightly weird way with them after all, after all that she'd been through. Or maybe grandmother was also feeling such grief and guilt over the dead sisters that she poured extra attention into the twins, making them naturally gravitate to her for comfort. Totally. The similarity in favorite activities that the twins had with their sisters can also be explained in this way. The grandmother and other family members might have consciously or unconsciously steered them towards things that the older sisters had enjoyed doing rather than the twins spontaneously deciding that they liked this thing or that thing. Yeah, of course. It's a combination of genetics and environment not reincarnation. There are various other biases at play here that could have influenced the twins' behavior. If your children have been killed by a car, you're probably going to be pretty wary around cars when your younger children start walking by themselves. It's not difficult to imagine that Florence or the twins' grandmother would act in an overprotective manner when crossing the road with them, or they might have developed a fear of cars that could easily pass on to the young twins. With regards to Dr. Ian Stevenson, he came to some very weird conclusions in his book. In a different example of potential twin reincarnation, he theorized that the twins were born as twins thanks to the conscious will of their mother. Again, Mr. St uh, Dr. Stevenson, where did you go to medical? <laughs> like, how? Was he a psychiatrist? You know how this works. It doesn't work like this. In the next sentence, he goes on to say that in the case of the Pollock twins, as Florence didn't share her husband's belief in reincarnation, quote, if she brought about the twin birth, she did not do so consciously. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Conscious will of the mother did not do so consciously. Come on. Can we just ignore Doc Ian already, please? Uh, so you can will twins into existence, but you might do it without realizing. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. That explains a lot. I'm glad Katie and I are on exactly the same page with this ridiculousness from the good doctor. Stevenson, oh, can't we leave him alone? <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about. Stevenson also theorized that as Jennifer was born with birthmarks matching those of her older sister and her identical twin was not, the reincarnation was more likely to be an explanation than just you know, coincidence. The birthmarks on Jennifer do seem to be the main evidence for reincarnation, and in other cases, birthmarks or traces from previous accidents are commonly found on the new body. There's no real way to explain this apart from genetics and development in the womb and plain old coincidence. Yeah, none of this is so outrageous that it can't be coincidence. And even if it was outrageous, I'd still be like there's a rational explanation, or <laughs> it might be still coincidence. The mark on Jennifer's forehead, while similar, was not exactly like Jacqueline's scar, and I wasn't able to find pictures of the waist birthmarks to compare similarities. Dr. Stevenson also posited that Florence could have physically transferred the marks onto Jennifer, as her thoughts would still have been dominated by the deaths of her older daughters. <laughs> Mate, what are you up to? 
Would this be evidence of reincarnation or something else then? I'm not sure, but it sure sounds a little wacky. As time went on, the twins were said to grow up looking more like their older sisters, with one being taller and the other being shorter and a bit more stocky to quote some articles. I found some pictures of them as adults, however, and they look pretty similar in face, body shape, and height to me. And while twins from a single egg or monozygotic twins are also called identical twins, there's always something a little different about each one. And in rare cases, some monozygotic twins can actually have different colored skin, hair, and eyes. Whoa! I didn't even know that monozygotic twins were a thing. So with normal twins, non-identical, fraternal twins, is that what it's called? Uh... Two, two eggs, two separate sperms, two separate people. Same genetic relationship as uh, regular siblings. Monozygotic twins, one egg, two sperms. So they're like half identical. Is that, Am I getting that right? That's wild. I can't believe I didn't know that until today. Is that really... Am I understanding that correctly? There is always something different about... Or am I, is that just more, is that just regular twins? I'm looking it up. Nope, I'm an idiot. I just totally misunderstood it. That is just regular ass identical twins. That's they do have small differences. Yeah, because there's types of twins: fraternal, uh, regular brother and sister, identical, monozygotic, which we just discussed, and then they get into conjoined twins. And I'm like, okay, so there's not some magical third variety of twins that I've not known about my whole life. I'm sorry for spreading such misinformation. I'm glad I looked it up because everyone in this comment would be like, in the comments, would be like, Simon, you made a mistake. Made a mistake. It's just identical twins, isn't it, mate? <laughs> Damn it. I thought I'd learned something really cool and new today. As Bollock twins had the same parents as their older sisters, it's not really so surprising that they strongly resembled them in some way. The only confirmed picture of the older Joanna and Jacqueline that I found was on the front page of a newspaper when they died. The girls pictured on there do not resemble the twins in any striking way, at least not to me. Isn't it also a less convincing case for reincarnation that the twins were born back, uh, born into the same family? All the things they picked up on and seemingly knew without being told could have been told to them by their brothers, or they could have just been saying anything that, and their parents made connections that weren't really there. We all know that young children say all kinds of weird and sometimes creepy stuff, but it doesn't mean that they're hosting a spirit that died violently a few years previously. Yeah, <laughs> it's like when kids accidentally say creepy stuff, you're like... That's I can't. I, I, next time my kid say, says something creepy, I'll remember it. And I'll bring it back up on the show because it's happened a couple of times, and I can't think of any examples. And you're like, oh, that's weird. But it's just like because they're trying to string words together that they don't understand. It's like ah uh, ah. Uh. Wouldn't you think that a more compelling case for reincarnation would be of children that were coming out with things that they couldn't possibly have knowledge of or have been exposed to when they were living? Nowadays, especially, it would be quite easy for a child to research. Nowadays, especially, it would be quite easy to research what a child was saying and find out if this person or that had actually existed. I'm not suggesting that this was a deliberate hoax. Maybe more John Pollock was so desperate to believe in reincarnation that he probably saw anything as proof that his daughters had come back. The Pollocks ended up leaving the Catholic Church in the 1960s due to negative reactions from their fellow members regarding John's views. So where did that leave the twins? Did their parents, especially their father, treat them differently than they would have had the older sisters still been alive? Were they allowed to develop by themselves as individuals from infancy, or were they pushed into this or that direction, depending on what their older sisters had done at that age? I suppose it was lucky for them that this past life remembrance stopped and they could continue as regular children from the age of five. The twins themselves apparently accepted their father's views uh, that they were the reincarnations of their older sisters, but didn't come out as reincarnation experts or advocates as they got older. Uh, as all parallel behavior and memories had stopped when they were only five, they probably couldn't even remember doing any of those things at that time. Maybe they just nodded and agreed with whatever their dad said because it was just easier. Yeah, and you're like, oh, look, it makes dad really happy. It's like, I know I'm not my sister, but my dad never dealt with his grief, and now I don't want him to be sad and broken and need years of therapy. Um, yeah, so that's that. I mean, it's not quite. There's a couple more paragraphs. I'm not anti the idea of reincarnation, Katie says. I'm not anti it. It'd be brilliant. I am anti that it's real. 
uh, as well as reading about it independently in the past i've also read several novels recently where past lives or repeated lives are the major theme cloud atlas is one of my favorite books of all time stick with it it's worth it i've never read it i haven't seen the film though it's a cool and comforting idea that we can improve our souls and eventually get off this damn rock to where the really good stuff's happening i don't believe that this particular case of the pollock twins is cold hard evidence of souls leaving one body and coming back in another there are other more recent cases where children have talked about totally bizarre things and unconnected lives that that ended up actually relating to real people the only issue with these though is that it is almost always children that are the case studies after a while they forget or grow out of it four or five year olds not being the most reliable of narrators also what are you gonna do your four-year-old suddenly announces that he used to write movies had a daughter called jennifer and died at the age of 48 this was a real case by the way what is there to be done i guess you could sit him down in front of some old classics to see if he can bring in the big bucks when he gets older but apart from that you're just going to carry on with your day to day routine and hope that he stops talking about it yeah eventually it's like when your kids do something weird it's just like just ignore it it'll go away i mean unless it doesn't like murdering cats or something then get some help <laughs> it's just like don't worry everything will be fine it'll go away that doesn't mean you can't parent <laughs> my show the casual criminalist another podcast that i do which you should absolutely check out if you're enjoying this we cover it all the time like bad parenting leads to serial killers not all the time but often i mean not often but like serial killers often have bad childhoods there is an interesting footnote to the pollock twin story though while they had no recollection of past lives as they got older twin jillian pollock experienced some sort of vision or flashback as an adult she spoke to her dad and described in great detail a house and garden where she saw herself playing in a sandpit john recognized the description as a house the family had lived in in wickham the only issue the pollocks had lived there before jillian was born older sister joanna had lived there when she was young but jillian had never been to the house or even the village in a whole current life so that wraps it up what was the question we asked at the beginning were the pollock sisters reincarnated and what did i say at the beginning the answer is no the answer is no i hope you enjoyed today's video <laughs> maybe you did maybe you're like simon reincarnation's real i love it if you did smash that like button uh subscribe if you're listening as a podcast hello there a review would be amazing love some reviews five stars preferred or if you like two star like the story reincarnation's real next time get it right <laughs> that'd be awesome thank you for listening or watching and i'll see you next time